this afternoon um, we've got a, a parcel of rough boulder opal here in front of us and uh, this parcel this parcel here we bought from Paul this morning and now we just want to do a little bit of an analysis of uh, of the pieces that are here so that people can perhaps understand a little bit more about the way forward now with these particular pieces of rough opal so I've got Rod here, um, and Rod, can you give us a bit of a, an indication here of what you're thinking about this parcel? Well, Liam, when you buy a parcel, to avoid leaving the miner with all his low-grade, the rubbish, you buy it as a parcel. So there's good and there's bad. In right. It. So, Rod, it's not all just about the size of the gem, is it? So what you're saying here is you're maximising the quality and... I guess the size, but you're also taking into consideration the shape for the designer? Is that what you're thinking? Ian, we always cut for quality, always bearing in mind that every stone we cut has the potential to be set in a piece of jewellery. Right. right. So it has to suit jewellery use. Mm. And you, pick, you, you work the shape to maximise the yield, mm -hmm. but it also has to be an attractive stone. Right, so it's a combination of all these things that I think of. You'll see there there's a little line of ironstone that breaks through the surface of the opal. Mm -hmm. So the first thing there, saw cut through there. Right. Saw cut down through that potch side and I'll get a beautiful blue-green stone out of that end. Mm -hmm. Okay. Other end, when, when they split the boulder, there's a little crack down there so I'll put a saw down through there and get another good stone out of that section right. and then a small one out of that section so right. three stones out of that stone okay. beautiful beautiful blue greens really really strong so, right. this one another beautiful beautiful blue green there's the potch bar there so the saw cut will go through that just through the potch bar and then I'll grind the last of it right. all this ironstone will cut away and we'll get a beautiful beautiful stone in there the final shape I determine after I've got rid of everything else mm -hmm. right. this is a very different one beautiful color there play of color white base but beautiful beautiful color and beautiful color on that face mm -hmm. but if you have a look at the end of the piece of stone you'll see the two faces of colour. I see. So the saw cut will go through there and straight down through the peak there. Right. And then I've got that on a relatively fat sur flat surface to work. Mm -hmm. And I've got that one on a relatively flat surface to work. I see. Yeah. Magnificent piece of matrix. Oh, right. Okay, opal matrix where the opal is diffused through the ironstone. Mm -hmm. right. I'll look at this and I'll look at the bands of the predominant colour within the matrix. Now we can see up here predominantly reds into the oranges, the yellows and then down into the greens. Right. So my idea is there, I would put a saw cut through there through there and we've got this beautiful red band right and then I'll cut at least two match stones out of that band uh -huh. right. I can then also cut another stone from the top right. of the band and then I'll cut more from down in the blue green band I see. Right. so I see. I'm going to get at least one two three possibly six stones out of that one piece Complexity of boulder is the seams don't run straight through the ironstone. Sometimes they'll dive down, they'll split back under themselves, they'll be Y shaped, they'll be V shaped. And this is an example of that. Mm -hmm. Lovely colour there that's now concave from the original split. If you roll it over, there's beautiful colour there that's convex. If you look at the side, you can see the two seams just diverging right. as a V. So that complicates my life because to cut you need to leave ironstone on the back. Yep. 
I'm probably going to have to sacrifice one of these two mm. to get the other because there's not enough between, I'll try, to get both of them onto an ironstone back. So this happens sometimes, isn't it? You've got to make tough decisions about the, uh, about the stone sometimes. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Do I sacrifice this one to win that one or do I try and get both of them and perhaps lose both? Yeah right. yeah, right. So, yeah, there's a lot of thought goes into some of this material. So you'll probably sit on that one for a little while and give it some thought? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. That, that one definitely. Uh, there's a, a whole edge here that's no ironstone. So I'll take that off because mm. we need the ironstone as a backing. Right. I'll take that off to help me make the decision whether I can put a saw through there. Being a parcel, you end up some... You know, there's a little, lovely little red flash down there but it will not be a full face clean piece of boulder. Mm. So, but I'll still cut a little bit of, one or two stones out of there with a little bit of ironstone on the top edge, but just a lovely little bit of colour. So maybe a little match pair of mm -hmm. red there, for right. maybe earring right. stones or something. Yeah. 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 Still pretty little stones there. Yeah. Yeah. But with the ironstone, they won't be such high, high value. Yeah. And then this is the last one, Rod. And this is the smaller last, ones. This is the smaller stones. A nice little bit of red there. I'll cut a little stone out of that. Oops. Yep. Another little stone out of that area here. There's a bit of blue green, green blue there. I'll get a little stone out of that. Yep. Put it through the potch line, yep. and get a number of small stones out so of. So you're that. not going to get a big stone out of here. You're going to aim for a multiple number of smaller ones, eh? But it depends on your market. If you've got a tourist type market where you can cut a big stone, mm. yes but I prefer to go for the smaller quality stone. Hey Rod, we've got this, um, this oblong blue-green piece in your hands here. Um, tell us what you're going to do. Well, first one is saw cut straight through that little seam of iron stone. So, okay. six-inch diamond saw. Now two pieces. Excellent. This one here, I just took the end off with the saw, yeah. and you'll see that the colour bar actually runs under that bit of iron stone. Okay. So what I'm going to do is rather than saw that off, I will grind it off the face of the opal, just to see how far that opal goes. But to me, it run the opal probably runs that far, so there may be just a little stone up in that top corner as well. I see. Big piece, so it'll take quite a while to saw my way through this one. Okay. This is the result. You, there's the colour bar that was above the white crotch bar. Right. Right, so this is all the junk. Yep. Right. Now, there's a little flash of colour out the end there, and there was some Potch in between, so there's your main, the main stone. Yep. Yeah, it's lovely stone in there. But there'll be a little stone in there. Okay. Yeah, just something like a little six by four, maybe six and a half by four and a half. Just a nice little stone out of there. Yeah. And the possibility even that it could complement the main stone. Yep. make it easier to slice this, I, you know, I've got to go up through that peak there, right. I must do that, two faces of colour, but what I'm going to do, I'll just saw the end off first, just that big dead end, I'll saw that off first, okay. and that'll make it easier for me to then saw my way up through there and break it into the two slabs. Yeah. Right, uh, this one that's approximate at the moment, there are the two faces, but I won't make final decision until I start cleaning them down a little bit more and whether we go for one large stone or I might put a saw cut through there, get a lovely triangular drop shape there. Mm. So there's a, there's a variation in the colour pattern in the stone. Yeah. 
so I'll work that. So this is just a preliminary cut. The other face, you can see there's iron stone still on the face there. So I'll clean that off first and then possibly through there or somewhere, but there are at least two stones in that. And there's another little off-cut piece as well. Yep. So this will end up producing a number of stones, not just not those two. So let's pull all them up right and just see what you've got. Okay, what we've done just now. And start of a little collection of... Absolutely. We start on the coarse grinder to knock the material off. Alright, so it's going to be a bit of noise here, isn't it? It's a little bit noisy, so we'll see how we go. Okay. Yep. Diamond plated wheels. What I'll do is just take off a little bit of iron so and get down to my colour. need a little corner on them, it's hard to have sharp corners on opal. So while I'm doing it I take a little corner off as well. Too much chance of chipping or breaking the stone if you have sharp corners. I'll just run onto the fine diamond wheel, just a little touch around the edge of the stone. The back's finished. One thing that I have always done is I've worked with the jewellery trade now for a long time and work on the principle that every stone you cut will ultimately be set in a piece of jewellery. So make it easy for the jeweller. A flat back. A lot of opal, boulder and black are cut with a big curved back on it. It adds weight to the stone but makes it very difficult for a jeweller to set. So all of mine have a flat back and a bevel. On the back edge of the stone, between the side and the flat back, I put a little chamfer. Let's see. A little chamfer right around the back of the stone. take away sharp edges, number one, takes away the sharp edges, but number two, if you're a jeweller and you're doing a rub over setting, you've got the flat back, you put your metal up there, you've got a little bead of solder there. Mm. Now that's never going to be a sharp corner, there's always something in there. So by putting that little bevel on the back of the stone, that takes up, gives room for a jeweller in that little corner to have a bit of silver, bit of solder or what happened. Ian, the small green one has a concave fracture surface. So I don't need to do anything on that on the grinding wheel from this point. Mm -hmm. The rest of this process for this little stone will be on the sanding disc. Mm, okay, so okay. we'll come back to that later. We'll right? come back to that one later. Mm. Now, this one, because it's a thick seam of opal and it's got iron sand all across the face here, mm. this one I'll clean the face on the grinding wheel, okay. on the fine grinding wheel. Oh, yeah. So we'll start working that down to try and remove those areas of iron stone to see just how much opal we have. Add a fair bit of that iron stone off the face of that stone there. Yes, Ian, but I'm going to have to go back to the saw now right. because there's a little hole in there where the opal fracture when they split the boulder. Mm. But I'm going to put a saw through there and we'll get a really lovely, lovely gem out of this top piece. Yeah, the ironstone came off the face of that, as I was expecting. Saw cut through there, so there's a beautiful gem up in that top end of it. An area of potch there that has to come away. Now the ironstone's been peeled off. You can see this potch there, but there's still another nice little stone in there. Not a big one, but it'll be a nice little okay. stone. So saw cut through there, grind that potch away, and two stones out of there. So Rod, and the decision now is: you see there are two little spots of ironstone in the face there. Right. I'm going to finish the stone and leave that in because right. my choice is leave it there 
or if I grind it away, we lose that much stone. Right. Now there's some nice colour down in this lower part of the stone. Mm -hmm. right. There's also the possibility that there's a little bit of thickness in the seam. As I go a little bit thinner on the seam, on the sanding discs, some of that iron stone may disappear. Right. So it's always a little bit of a lot of a little bit of cutting and a lot of looking and thinking. Mm. Bit, right? Yeah. Because if you take sit, uh, because sometimes the opal, when the bowl of miners split the boulders, there's a bit of stress in there. So I shape it to approximately its final shape, and then leave it for say two or three days before I finish these. Mm -hmm. I'll now dress the backs, put them on dop sticks and then work them on my sanding discs to their final shape and then to then the polish. Mm. So Rod, these stones you really can't get a really good idea of what the final result is as such, but you, I mean you can see the size obviously, but uh, and you can probably see the potential, but there's still a lot of, long way to go with these isn't there? Oh yeah, there's a few hours work in this yet. Mm. and. As I work this, it's still a fairly thick seam of opal there, mm. and as I wear, wear, work it down, the, the colour will become a little bit brighter than you see there now. Yeah, right. yeah. yeah so a lot of work to go. Uh, I can see the potential through experience, but it'll be a whole lot prettier than what you see now when the parcel's finished. Downing. Here it is all finished on the sticks. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll pop them off and then dress the, the backs in the next few minutes. So there they all are, right. all done and finished. Yeah. So you've actually finished the tops of these, polished all completed, is that the case? It's it, all done, finished right through okay. the polish stage, yeah, all done. So now you take it off and then you uh, you just do the back of the stone. Be bevel the back. And that's the piece, last piece. That's it? it, that's it. Okay. Well, yeah. Fabulous. Looks good. The thinking is. Well, this is the idea about buying parcel lots here and you get a whole range of quality. Mm -hmm. you, know, you can buy a pure gem parcel but it's going to be very very expensive and rare so you buy a little mixed parcel like the one we did and you get your full range of material out of that. So you get the nice gem stones, lots of red, the gem, that was the big one that had the you had to split in halves, there are the two pieces out of that all the way down just to a little piece of inexpensive matrix. So there's a whole range here. Really, really vibrant little, beautiful little green, orange, yellow, blue. That's just a little, lovely little gem there. There's a whole range of material here. It's lovely green, flat blue in there. And all the way down to just a little low grade, little, little cheap stone there. Mm -hmm. a couple of but I always cut the entire parcel. Now you might remember yesterday we were looking at that big piece of matrix and I'd drawn all the lines on mm. on what I wanted to do with it. And this is the result of that big piece of matrix. Right. There are the four stones, there's the top piece. Then you remember there are those couple angular pieces right. and the small one from down in that bottom corner. Okay. And there, there's the result of that. Just beautiful, beautiful material. Lots just, of colour in that, right? Lots of colour. It's, it's verging on solid gem. Just, mm. just brilliant stone. Brilliant, brilliant stone.